Welcome to the April 2022 release overview for Provision Point workspaces. In this video, we will take you through our new sensitivity labels, our new compliance policy rules for privacy mismatch, title mismatch, and URL mismatch, as well as some of the new actions and API endpoints, and the ability to assign a dynamic site collection administrator. Let's take a look at sensitivity labels. You need to be logged into Provision Point Workspaces as an app manager, so you have access to the admin area. If you come into settings and group settings, there is a toggle to enable sensitivity labels. This must be set to yes. If we go back into settings, we can see there's a new sensitivity label area. This allows you to add any sensitivity labels that you've already got set up in your tenant. Now, if you haven't got sensitivity labels enabled in your tenant yet, you must do that first. And you must enable it for containers. When we talk about sensitivity labels and provision point workspaces, we're referring to applying a sensitivity label to a group, a team, or a site. If I come into the Compliance Centre and into Information Protection, this is where I can find out details about any sensitivity labels that I've already got configured in my tenant. If I come into Provision Point Workspaces, I can see I've already configured my two sensitivity labels, but if I edit these, I can show you the details. To add my sensitivity label into Provision Point Workspaces, I must go and collect the label ID and the sensitivity. Now this is listed as the priority. I can then define what settings will be controlled using this sensitivity label. And I must stress, this must match what is configured in your tenant. Once they are configured, I can then go into my service definitions. I'll go into my departmental team one, and there's a new sensitivity tab. And in here, I can say whether I want to allow sensitivity labels to be used, what the default label would be, if I am going to allow any overrides, whether that's via an action or if I allow my requester to change this at the point of request, which labels they can choose from. And here I've got the toggle set to no, I'm not going to allow my requester to choose the sensitivity. So it means that anything that is created from here will have the internal sensitivity label applied. Let's look at the compliance policy changes now. A compliance policy itself runs on a scheduled basis and it will look for a specific set of rules that you define on any service definitions that you link compliance policy to. The changes we have made here all relate to the rules that are now available. Here is a compliance policy that I already have and I can have a look at a rule set and look at the new rules that we have in place. So let's start with privacy mismatch. What this will do is allow you to configure a rule to look and report, to look and notify someone, or to align to a specific value. What we're talking about is the privacy setting that is assigned to a group. So whether or not it is private or public. If you're not dealing with group related workspaces, this won't mean much to you. In here, we have to choose what type of mismatch we're looking for. And there are several types of mismatch that you can look for. Whether you want to check if there is a mismatch between your Office 365 workspace or the service instance within Provision Point. If you want to look at anything that doesn't match your service definition default, if you've used any transform tags, so these could be things like request variables, lookups and things like that. Or if you want to look for a specific value. I want to check my Office 365 workspace or my service instance in Provision Point to see if any of them don't match private because that's what should be defined from my service definition. That's as far as you normally go if you're looking at the notify or the report rules. But if you are using the align rule, you can also choose where you want to align this to. I might choose to align it to my Office 365 workspace, or I might choose a defined value. 
Now, the other rules we have relate to title mismatch and URL mismatch. Now, I've grouped these two together slightly because they have the same report, notify and align that you've seen previously in privacy mismatch. But what these are looking at is the title of your team or your site or your planner and comparing that with what is available in Office 365. As well as that, we have the URL mismatch. So it might be a case of the URL itself for your SharePoint site has changed in your Office 365 environment. So again, if I come into these rules, I can see I have the same options here. What mismatch do I want to look for? Here we have an addition of regular expression. So it might be a case of you're looking for anything that has internal or external at the end because that's part of your naming convention. Or it could be that you're not looking for regular expression at all. You're just looking to see if the two environments don't match. And then I can pick which environment I want to match it to. So if Office 365 generally matches what you would expect, then that's great. If you want to enforce keeping it at what the service instance shows in provision point, that's what I can do. And I can do this the same for the title or the URL. So these two options have the same configuration. When I come into scheduled runs, I can check for any non-compliance. So anything in grey, I need to go in and have a look at. I can see which compliance policy ran and which service definition they were run on. I can see how many workspaces by this number in the status. If I come into the policy checks, I can have a look at each individual workspace. So I can see these are the four that are assigned. I can see one is compliance, so I don't have to worry about that one. And if I have a look here at this one, I can see here there is a title and a URL mismatch. Now, from the results of our compliance policy check, we can see that there are some mismatches occurring. And as we only did a store or report rule, we aren't making any changes automatically. To make those changes, we can use actions within provision point workspaces. Actions are enabled within each service definition, and you can assign permissions and approval processes to any actions to say who can run them and if any approval is required. Once they're added to the service definition, you can access them from the info page of any workspaces. In this release, we have added some new actions. We have a change URL action. It will do a check to look if this already exists. If it already exists, it will only update provision point workspaces. If it doesn't exist, it will also make a change in the O365 environment as well. If I come into the privacy section, I have the change directory visibility action. This action allows me to change the visibility options set within provision point workspaces directory. Here I can see that the requester list is the current setting and I can choose from one of the options that are available what I want to change it to. I also have a change sensitivity action. See, this links into our sensitivity labels, and I can see here this one has no sensitivity label set, but it is an internal one. I could choose to enforce that sensitivity label. Any changes I make will be updated in the timeline. As I come into the timeline, I can see all of the changes that I made. Change URL, change sensitivity. If I come back into the info page, I can see that the URL has been updated and the sensitivity label has been applied. And in this case, I also applied a name change to bring us in line with the compliance policy checks we saw earlier. We are also planning on retiring two of our current actions within Provision Point Workspaces. Add an owner and remove an owner. And then new replacements, add owners and remove owners. Now the main difference between these actions is the old one would only allow you to remove a single owner or add a single owner at any one time. Our new actions allow this to be done in bulk. For this release we would ask anyone that is currently using the add an owner or remove an owner to disable those and replace them with our new ones. In future releases 
we will then be able to retire completely the add an owner and remove an owner from the UI. Our new actions also have an API endpoint, allowing them to be run on your workspaces via our API. We have a knowledge base article with all of the action type IDs and properties that are available for each of our actions. One of the final changes we've made that affect your actions is around the allow requester to choose external sharing options or any other privacy settings. Previously, if you wanted to allow an action to be run to change the external sharing in this example, you had to allow the requester to choose the external sharing option. This is no longer the case. You can see that I can turn allow requester to no, which means it's always going to default any creations from this service definition to only people in my organisation. There is an override area which now relates purely to the change external sharing action. So I need to toggle on the options I want to be able to select from that action. If I go into a site that I've previously created, when I go into change external sharing, I have the option to override that. Now let's talk about the final feature, dynamically setting the site collection administrator for any site collections created through Provision Point workspaces. I've come into a service definition that is clearly set to a site collection. I'm on the overview tab and if I scroll down, there's now a new area called primary site collection administrator. Previously, you were only able to set a defined user, which you would pick from your Azure Active Directory. That's currently configured in that way here. If I change that to dynamic format, I can add in either a system tag or a transform tag that will actually equal a person. One of the built-in system tag is requester. This means whoever the requester is, they will become the site collection administrator. This also could be linked to a request form field. For this particular service definition, the owners are defined using request form fields. So I have one called primary owner, and I can add that one here, and that means whoever the primary owner is, that's who the site collection administrator will be. I've jumped into the info page of a site that has already been created using my service definition, and I can see that I defined the primary owner as Megan. If I have a look in my SharePoint Admin Center, I can see for HR announcements that Megan has been defined as the site admin. Thank you for your time today going through our April release. If you have any further questions or want to know any more information, please reach out to your account manager or to our support team.